Welcome back YouTube, I have Ahmed again from in-depth tech reviews and here is Google Apps updates roundup number 17 and in this video I'm going to show you all the new changes in Google Apps that took place in the third week of March. So let's see what's new with Google Apps but before getting started let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. Let's start with Google Lens and the first change is the new Lens icon that you will find in the Google app or any other app that integrates with Google Lens. And the second change is the new Google Lens Photos Gallery. When you open the app and then tap on the gallery icon, you will see the photos are now organized differently. It will show you first the screenshots and all other images will come after. And that makes sense because we usually take screenshots for products or articles we want to check later. And Google Lens is a very good app for this purpose. It will show you only a grid of eight screenshots. And if you want to view more, you can tap on the view all button to check the rest of your screenshots. And the third change is the more integration with Google Photos. So for example, if you have a photo in your gallery that includes text or a product, and then swipe up for more details, you will see a new Google Lens card over here that includes four different shortcuts copy text search listen and translate that's exactly the same as using the google lens card the only difference when you use it that way you need to wait for google lens to load and then modify your choice based on what you want to do but now you can immediately jump to the shortcut you want so for example if i tapped on listen it will start playing the text straight away and instead of waiting first to load and then play the text after and as I mentioned, this feature will only work if your photo includes text or a product. So for example, this is just a normal shot and when I swipe up for more details, the Google Lens card will not show up. Next, Google Chrome. And it got a lot of performance improvements this month. So let's start with Chrome for Android. And the first change is the 64-bit support. As you see here on my Pixel 5, it says 64-bit between brackets. And if you want to confirm which version you are using, just go to Chrome colon two forward slashes version and you will see the same page. Look for the same number to know your version. To be able to get the 64 bit on your device, your phone should be on Android 10 or later with 8 gigabytes of RAM or more. And as per Google's blog post, that will give you some performance improvements. So when I scroll down over here, it says you will get 8.5% faster loading time for pages and 28% smoother when it comes to scrolling and input latency. Another feature Google added to Chrome for Android that will improve the startup time by 13%. The feature is called Freeze Dried. This feature will create a lightweight version of your open tabs that are similar in size to a screenshot but they will support scrolling, zooming, and the tapping on links. Chrome will use this freeze dry taps at startup while the actual tap loads take place in the background. So for example, if you force quit your Google Chrome like this and open it again, you should get a 13% faster performance because it will use the lightweight version of your tab until the actual page loads. And for demonstration purposes, Google added a quick video to show you the difference between using freeze dried on the right and the normal way on the left. So let's play the video. And as you see here, the page loaded immediately while here it took three extra seconds. On top of this, all versions of Google Chrome on Android will get also some improvements. You will see 7.5% faster startup time, 5% improvement in memory usage, and 2% faster page loads. Now let's quickly compare the difference in performance between the 32-bit and the 64-bit versions of Google Chrome. I have here my Pixel 3 XL and the Pixel 5, and both are on the latest build. The Pixel 3 XL has 4 gigabytes of RAM, and that's why it's running the 32-bit version, while the Pixel 5 has 8 gigabytes of RAM and running the 64-bit version. Both are running the latest version of Android 11, and when it comes to the C CPU performance, those are the closest devices I have, and as per Geekbench 5, the Pixel 3 XL is better in the multi-core score, 
and the Pixel 5 is better in the single core. On the Pixel 5, I will turn off the smooth display or the 90 Hertz refresh rate to match the 3XL. No other apps running in the background, only Google Chrome on both. I will compare the scrolling using a very heavy website with a lot of animations on both devices. And this is the first time to load the web page on both devices, so they are not cached. So let's start with the scrolling. From what I see at the very end, the Pixel 3 XL scrolling was laggy and it ended up with a glitch. While the Pixel 5 was noticeably better in handling this part of the web page, so let me play it a couple of times to be able to see the difference. And when it comes to the desktop version of Google Chrome, expect to see a lot of performance improvements as well. On Windows, you will get 22% less CPU usage, 8% less in renderer, and 3% less GPU usage, in addition to 20% less memory consumption. On Mac, you will get 65% improvement when it comes to energy consumption. Google Chrome for desktop also got the live caption feature. To activate it, head over to settings, then click on advanced accessibility, and you will see the live caption toggle at the very top. So I'm gonna turn it on and play a video from my website. Once I started the video, the floating live caption window showed up and I can place it anywhere on the screen. I can expand it by clicking on the small arrow at the bottom or close it by using the X at the top right corner. Before jumping to the next category, let's give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, dealworlds.com. They are specialized in selling genuine games and software keys in a very affordable prices. In addition to my special promo code that will give you 50% extra discount on all software keys. Let's take Windows 10 Pro OEM key as an example. Click the product you want, click on add to cart, hover the mouse over the bag at the top right corner and click on view cart. Expand the discount codes box and type BDW50 all in caps. Hit apply coupon and here you go, you got Windows 10 Pro OEM key for $7.58. The purchase process might be tricky for some, so let me show you a quick example. Hit the proceed to checkout button, you can register or check out as a guest. I will go ahead and choose a checkout as guest and hit continue. Fill in your personal details and proceed to the payment details. Deal Worlds are using a secure payment system called C Wallet Co to make sure your details are safe. So let's go ahead and click continue. Next, review your order and click on the place order button. You will get another page with a button to choose your payment method. Click on it, then click on process order. Here you can choose to pay using PayPal or credit card. For me, I will pay using my PayPal account and click on the to pay button. Then I will sign in with my PayPal account and that's it. The order is successful and I will receive an email with the product key. All the links and the promo code are in the description below. So let's get back to the review. Next, Google Files. And now it has a new favorites folder, which means now you will be able to mark some files as your favorites and they will show up here. And as per the description, the app will not suggest these files to be cleaned. And if you want to add any files to your favorites, simply select one or multiple files and then tap on the three dots at the top right corner then choose add to favorites when you go back to your favorites folder you will see all the files you added if you want to remove any of them you can do the same process but you will see another option called remove from favorites next google home and now it prepares to add different access roles to your household now when you go to settings and then go to household Tap on any account you already have in your Google Home app and you will see two new menu items. One is called access details and the other called devices. As you see, the access details is showing the word manager and under devices, I have access to all devices. But when I go inside any of these menu items, I don't have any other options to choose from. Even when I go to a different account, which is not mine, I still don't have any option to change the access levels. 
so expect this to change in the future. Google Home 2.34 also adds a real-time Nest Wi-Fi usage and network history graphs. I don't have a Nest Wi-Fi to show you how it looks, but this is an article from 9to5Google with a couple of screenshots on how the uh, graphs should look like. They will provide you with the real-time information about your network usage and your internet speed. So if you want to know how to access the two new graphs, the steps are mentioned in the article and I'm going to leave the link in the description below. And finally, it adds support to the Nest Hub second gen with the sleep sensing technology using the Soli Raider. Next, Family Link. And if you are using it to manage your kids devices, you will see some new options. And the first one is the ability to always allow certain apps. For example, you can tap on the sand clock icon next to any of the apps and you will see the new option, which is called always allow with the infinity icon. When you choose it, this app will override the screen time limit set on the device. So for example, if you have a screen time set over here for three hours and your kid already exceeded the three hours, this app will still work on the device normally. And that feature will be useful in cases if you want to always allow the remote learning apps without impacting the screen time schedule. The graph will also change to show you the time spent in the always allowed apps versus other apps. Next, you will be able to access the parental controls from the managed device instead of only using your own device. And finally, Google created a new web page called families.google that will give you tips about how to manage your kids' devices in addition to some other useful tips. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the changes that took place in the third week of March. So I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.